Hello from On Ink Mill. This is just a quick video to introduce you to a camera I'm very fond of. It's the Sankyo CME1100. And this is just a quick rundown of the camera showing you its features and how to use it, as this will soon be a rental item on our website on 8mil.com. So, first things first. I think this is pretty much Sankyo's flagship professional Super 8 camera back in the day. And as such, it has a really good lens on it, an ingenious focusing system, is very quiet running, and has filming speeds 18, 24, 36, and 54 frames per second. Um, it's Super 8, like I say, and it can take all modern Super 8 film speeds, that's 50 ASA, 100 ASA, 200 ASA, and 500 ASA. The Super 8 cartridge is inserted here by pressing a button at the back of the camera that flips the door down and you'll insert your cartridge here. Put the door up and you're ready to film. On the front of the camera are three buttons. There's an on-off switch here, which is just a, a slider switch that literally in the up position locks the shutter release. So it stops it from being depressed. In the down position, you can then press your shutter release. Above the shutter release is something that's really important to this camera. It's high focus. It has something called a high focus system. It's basically a rangefinder system that you might find in an old fashioned 35 mil compact camera. So how it works, when you're looking through the viewfinder at your subject, you press the high focus switch and you'll see that your subject will zoom in and there'll be two images, two non-converged images of your subject. With the high focus switch pressed in, you then, with your hand on the underside of the lens barrel, focus on your subject such that those two images converge. When they converge, your subject is in focus. You can then take your finger off the high focus switch and film. Now, the reason I mention having your hand on the underside of the lens barrel is because the high focus system relies on two lenses either side here. And with your hand over the lens barrel, you obscure those lenses and you, your high focus system won't work. So, quick rundown of how to focus. Look through the viewfinder, press the high focus orange switch above the shutter release, Hand on the underside of the barrel, focus until the two images converge, take your finger off and you can film. So you don't have to do any zooming in on your subject and then focusing as you do with other Super 8 cameras. It does that all for you with this switch, which I think is pretty ingenious. And it's actually, it's a good system. It's got a good sharp lens on it. The camera also has a macro, which is confusingly, this looks like an on off switch to the camera. It isn't, it's actually on off for the macro. So in off position, you'll find that the zoom control locks and that there's a yellow area on the zoom ring, which is for your macro focusing. With your macro focusing switched on, this yellow area is then unlocked and you can focus from, I think, what is it? naught centimetres to one metre. So naught to 100 centimetres. And that's the yellow area of your zoom control, which is at the back of the lens barrel. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't matter where the focusing is when you're in the macro mode of the camera, but you do need to have that enabled. Otherwise the macro area of the zoom ring will be locked. The high focus is disabled when you're in macro and you won't be using it at all for macro focusing. You would just be doing everything by eyesight through the viewfinder, moving the zoom control in the macro area of the lens. To take it out of macro mode, move the zoom ring out of the macro area, flick off here, and then you can use high focus as you were before. The slow motion button is on the top of the camera here, 54 frames per second. It has an auto 
light meter and also you can flip it into manual mode and you can lock your f-stops using this control here you can see your f-stops through the viewfinder when you're filming so it goes from 22 through to 1.8 it's a dead easy cam to use really nice it has a fade control on it as well but just ignore that the fade controls were a big thing back in the day because if you could fade in and fade out the, the shots that you were doing for your family movie, it just, you know, added a bit of production value. But obviously, if we want to do any kind of fade these days, we can do that in digital edit. Otherwise, I think that's about it. Oh, to focus the viewfinder to your eyesight, there's a control just here at the back of the camera. Best practice when you're focusing a viewfinder uh, to your particular uh, eyesight is to zoom fully in on a subject that's distant like a lamppost at the end of the street put the lens on to infinity look through the viewfinder at your distant object and turn the knob until it's really sharp to your eyesight so that's important I mean it's not as important with this camera because you have the high focus system but obviously, if you're doing macro shots, you need for the viewfinder to be set to your eyesight to get good, accurate results. Um, just a note, if you're renting this from us, the badge at the front here is missing. It didn't go missing while it was out on rent to you, so don't worry. And that's it. Happy shooting.